Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'd like to talk about our experiences with kids having lip ties, tongue ties, getting them revised, and all that. This was uh, another requested video, which is great. If you have ideas for videos you'd like me to do, be sure and leave me a comment. So all three of our kids, the littlest one is taking a nap right now, have or had tongue and lip ties. So I just wanna give you kind of our experience so far, things that we've learned and helpful stuff hopefully for you if you are thinking about these types of things. This one is six, this one is three, and the other little guy is 15 months. Like I said, all of them had ties. This guy's were the most severe. Now, this is gonna be not so much the technical part of, you know, all of that type of information. I'll put some links below if you'd like to read more about that. It's just, this one is just gonna be our experience, which should hopefully still be really helpful. I wish I had known about this stuff years ago, for sure. Pretty life-changing. So I did not really, get into the full knowledge of lip and tongue ties and what a big deal they are until my third was born. We had a different midwife for him than I had with the first two and this one she knew what to look for when she thought that there may be ties present and recommended that we go have him evaluated. And at the time I was like, oh I don't know if it's that big of a deal or not. I wonder if we can just kind of get by. Because the thing is, with all three of them, I didn't really have pain and trouble with nursing to speak of. Maybe a little bit in the beginning, and then after that things would kind of level out and it would be okay. So I was thinking that we would just do that again this time and just kind of not worry about it. But this midwife told me just a little bit about all the different things that tongue ties can impact just for babies. So it was nursing, so supply, proper latch, of course, not breathing, not swallowing air while they're nursing, breathing, so just in general, easier time breathing, sleep. Um, so then I was like, okay, well we better look into this and I'm so glad that I did. So we went and had him evaluated, the littlest baby, and he definitely had a tongue tie and a lip tie, so we had them revised and it was a really easy procedure, not a big deal. They heal very quickly. You do have to follow up afterwards with some stretches to make sure that they don't reattach as they heal. We did those. I could tell the first time that he nursed after having it revised, I could tell a huge difference. Like the latch was better, you know, more complete, I guess is the best way I can describe it. He could nurse more effectively, I could tell. He could, you know, empty it <laughs> and just nurse more effectively. So that's what I noticed with him right away. And then as time went on, just through his whole baby stages, I noticed he was such a happy baby, so content, such a good sleeper. He, it was amazing. It was such a huge difference from my others. I mean, I didn't think that this one was a very fussy baby. I thought she was pretty happy, pretty good sleeper. He was way better than that even. Just because he could nurse more effectively, he could get that fatty milk more easily. There's a night and day difference between that little guy and this one as a baby. This guy, like I said, his ties were the most severe and he was a fussier baby, not a great sleeper. And I just think that's so interesting with either no ties or you know going in more severity of ties makes the fussier baby, at least in our family, that was our definitely our experience. So if you know anybody who has just had a baby, if you have a baby or expecting a baby, I highly recommend looking into tongue and lip ties. Now you do have to go to a specialist who is trained to diagnose them. A lot of pediatricians, dentists, and lactation consultants think that they know whether or not a tie is present, and there are so many of them who actually do not know and will wrongly diagnose. So to really find out for sure if your baby has ties, you have to go to a specialist who is trained in diagnosing them and revising them. 
I will leave some links below to the one that we used here locally. It was fantastic. So if you're in Colorado, somewhere around the Denver area, we had to drive about an hour to get there. So worth it. Um, definitely recommend them. And then you can find other ones in, in your area if you live in other areas. So then I started thinking about it for my other kids. And while we were ha having his appointments, the babies, I asked a little bit about older kids. Like, is it something to think about? And they told me, yes, for sure it is. So it impacts even more. So teeth spacing for that tongue, the lip tie, when there's a tie there, it can make a space in your front teeth. They both have had that. It'll make a high, narrow palate when that tongue is not free to press against the roof of your mouth like it's supposed to. It makes a high, narrow palate develop, which makes for more narrow facial structure. Now, of course, I had known a lot about Weston A. Price's information about nutrients for proper skeletal structure and I do believe that nutrients plays into whether or not they have a tongue tie. Not to get into all the technical stuff like I said I wasn't going to but I'm pretty sure I have the MTHFR gene mutation which lends to kids having ties. My children, I have a tie myself which I'm thinking about getting revised but anyway back to what all impacts. So they were explaining to me what all it impacts. So having a tie also makes your posture more forward because you, you naturally tend to go forward so that your air passages can open up so you can breathe well. When you have proper posture with a tie, everything is kind of pulled so that you can't breathe as easily. So it impacts posture, it impacts neck and shoulder and back tension, speech, obviously. So I was like, okay, well we should do this. And then they told me that for kids who have had the ties for some years, it's important for them to do myofunctional therapy, which is like physical therapy for your mouth, because they've had the ties in place, the tongue needs to start learning how to move properly. So you have to do that for a number of weeks before having the, the ties released or revised. So we did that, we found a really great myofunctional therapist. She does the therapy sessions over video on the computer, so they're live in person over Zoom. And so we started doing that, and then we had both of theirs revised some months ago. And another thing that they impact, I learned even more once I started talking to the myofunctional therapist about um, kids and adults even, and it impacts sleep. So having ties there can lead to sleep apnea, either now or later in life. It makes it so that you breathe through your mouth oftentimes rather than your nose. Breathing through your nose is so much healthier for so many different reasons. When you are not breathing properly, when you're sleeping, you don't get into those deep patterns of sleep and so with this guy I noticed after he had his revised and we were doing a little bit more of the myofunctional therapy his sleep got better and he was in a better mood during the day happier more of a sense of humor and things like that and I'm sure that that will improve as we go on so we've been continuing on with the myofunctional therapy I've seen great improvements in their speech not uh, having trouble with the L and R sounds as much as they did before doing really well with that. So we still have some weeks of myofunctional therapy with them to finish out. And basically that is, like I said, physical therapy for your mouth. So it's teaching your tongue, your lips, and just your mouth in general to move with that tongue freed up so that it can do its proper function. There's so many more. This is just like the tip of the iceberg for what tongue ties and lip ties to some degree impact. So like I said, if you want to know more, I'll have links below to more information that you can read about. I, like I said, have a tie myself, lip tie and then tongue tie, and I just know that I have struggled with that posture. When the tongue tie doctor told me about that, about how you, your body subconsciously makes you slouch forward to breathe easier when you have that tie, I was like, oh, my whole life has been explained. That's why I've struggled with posture my whole life. That's why I always have shoulder tension. That's why I can't swallow properly. I can't swallow properly. I never have my whole life and it's because of the tongue tie. So I am interested in getting it done for myself. I have to do myofunctional therapy ahead of time 
like the kids did and then have it done and then follow up with more afterwards. So if you're interested, I can update you on how it is for an adult to go through it, the changes that I notice, benefits, the whole experience and what that's like. So let me know if you're interested in hearing about that. But that in a nutshell is our experience with tongue and lip ties in babies and kids. Okay, so I hope that you found that interesting and helpful. We have to share this information far and wide for babies and kids and even adults to get this done. There's just so much misinformation or un lack of information about this out there and I really want to help change that because it makes such a huge difference and it's such a simple easy thing to fix and yeah, life changing. Check out that description box for the links that I mentioned. And if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think needs to know this information. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.